Hello and welcome to St Michael's Hill. Um, I'd like to start today by thanking you as always for tuning in and subscribing. Um, if you have done that, thank you. It, re it really helps. It's great to see those numbers going up all the time. Um, it's obviously a big part of uh, this whole YouTube thing is trying to make content that people enjoy. So uh, I guess really the only way I know that people are doing that is when people watch and people comment. And it's great that you uh, you do that. So thank you very much. This video is going to be focusing on the new layout. Um, I've been fairly busy uh, working on baseboards and things like that. Um, and I will bring you a video more on that when it's complete. But for now, um, I'm going to be looking at something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the control system that I'm going to be using on the layout. Um, I've recently picked, uh, picked up the control unit I'll be using and also some of the software that's going to help me along side that. So I'm going to be talking you through that, why I made those decisions and uh, I guess hopefully by the end of this video having a live kind of working version of uh, of the computer control system. With Christmas coming up I just thought I'd let you know kind of what to expect in terms of uh, upload schedule over the kind of holiday period. Um, if all goes to plan this video will be going up on Saturday the 14th of December um, then the following week I will have a, a video as usual on the Saturday before um, the Saturday between Christmas and New Year will be the December update and that will be the last video of the year. Um, in that video I'm going to be kind of talking a little bit about kind of upload schedules and, and things like that and how the channel will probably be changing a little bit in 2020. I'll explain all the reasons why uh, in that but uh, don't worry there will still be lots of content coming from my channel. So if you're slightly worried about hearing and things like that, there's nothing to worry about at all. Just a, a kind of a, a slight change, but I'll explain all about that uh, in the December update between Christmas and New Year. Hopefully then in, in 2020, the first couple of weeks, there'll be a, a fairly big update regarding the new layout. And also I'll be continuing working on other projects as well. So then on to today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, control system. And let, let's, fingers crossed, hope we can get it up and working. So as some of you may or may not know, the uh, control system I was using on uh, St. Michael's Hill until very recently was the NCE Power Cab, uh, which is a great controller. Don't get me wrong, I would thoroughly recommend it uh, to anyone. I think the person that uh, I sold mine to got a, a decent bargain and will be very happy with the kind of controller they've got. For a simple kind of uh, throttle for one or two or three locos, it's absolutely perfect. But when it comes to more sophisticated control and computer control, it just wasn't going to be possible to use the NCE. So I spoke with James at DCC Train Automation and recently uh, came back from there with this, uh, which is the DR5000 from DigiKeys. Now this system hopefully is going to do everything that I want it to do uh, in terms of computer control. Um, it's going to allow me to have um, block detection. It's going to allow me to kind of run everything from either a mobile app or a computer. Um, and I have chosen as well to use iTrain uh, alongside it to control everything. So in this video, I'm going to be kind of uh, opening it all up trying to connect it to a programming track to um, show you how uh, you can use it to program uh, locos and all that sort of stuff and then try and get it onto a, a, a piece of track just to test out the controller. Um, at the moment, right now, it's been set up um, basically as a Z21 that's controllable from uh, the phone that I'm using to film this. So um, I'm a little unsure about how I'm going to be able to film and uh, show you exactly what's going on. But hopefully by the end of the video, I would have linked it to iTrain and I'll be able to control it from my computer using uh, the iTrain software. So here the uh, unit is out of the box. As you can see, it's uh, fairly pretty, lights up a bit like a Christmas tree, which at this time of the year is obviously particularly seasonal. Um, it's a simple case of attaching the bus wire, or in this case, uh, it's just a straight piece of track into the uh, track output. There's also um, a section here for the uh, programming track, and then also connections for USB, 
RS bus wire um, and various other things, including loco net and uh, a LAN cable. Simply in this form, it works like any other controller. Um, I've just used a Z21 app on my phone and connected it to the uh, DR5000. And I can effectively just run trains that way. Just a simple case of pressing the green on button and uh, just lights up differently. And then you'll be able to run trains as, uh, as normal using the throttle on your phone. I'm sure you can also uh, add additional uh, throttles either straight to here or wireless throttles um, of various types. But for this, I'm just using the Z21 app on my phone. It's just a case of controlling it as you would with any other um, kind of local controller set. So here we go. Um, as you can see, it's just, just fairly standard, but it's working as it is. The uh, next step and how this will be uh, controlling my new layout is through computer control and for that I'm going to be using iTrain um, to basically control uh, all the trains on the tracks and uh, go from there. So I'm going to quickly introduce you to iTrain. So this is iTrain. Um, it's a piece of software that primarily allows you to control model railways um, on your computer. Um, obviously using various control systems, one of which is obviously the DR5000, um, you can basically create um, a running layout that is completely automated, that follows various rules, um, has complex uh, controls like block control, um, making sure that basically that you, all your trains can run around for hours on end without crashing into each other and without you having to do anything. Um, it does also allow semi-automatic and manual modes where you can take a lot more control about what's happening. Um, but effectively, it's a computer system that runs uh, model railways. Now, uh, you'll see here on the left-hand side, there is a, a section which is made up of uh, trains. This is basically your library. If we, uh, we can basically edit these. So if we go into the list and pick the EWS class 37 that uh, you've already seen in this video, You'll see here that you can name the loco, which I've just assigned its top running number. You can put a description in here. I've pretty much just, you know, kept it simple with EWS class 37. You can put extra detail in, so you can obviously put steam, diesel, electric, whatever. Allows you to put a length in. Now, this is fairly important for um, when you've got all of your automation. The computer needs to know how long each uh, train and locomotive is. So by putting in these details, you can make sure that you don't have any accidents. The decoder type here, there's various ones you can choose from, but uh, in the UK we're very much used to DCC. The number in brackets is the speed steps. So uh, as a rule, I would always go with uh, as high as possible. So 126 for me. The interface is... Um, is basically how it's connected to the track and uh, as I've said before I'm using a Z21 system so uh, well, I've cloned the DR5000 as a Z21 so uh, that's the system I'm using. Um, the address is obviously the loco's address. You can uh, add an image which then appears uh, when you're using the train so it's just a nice little touch. You can check speed so you can limit the loco's uh, top speed and then create uh, speed curves, uh, both for forward and backwards, so you can really get into a, a lot of detail in 128 steps, you can really obviously, oh, 126 steps, sorry, you can go into some real detail and create some very accurate and realistic speed curves. Functions, you can add as many as effectively that your loco can do, uh, so this one uh, only has lights in the cabin and uh, the directional running lights, I believe you can with sound locos you can go to town so uh, if we click here it might show us here we go so we can obviously go to town on all this sorts of stuff um, anything which your uh, loco can do you just add it to the steps and it becomes uh, something you can play around with later and then there are various other configuration options um, and all that sort of thing so it's a very nice little kind of system for uh, getting all of your locos set up then down here 
uh, in the bottom left hand corner you have your uh, basically throttle controls so you can uh, use this to uh, speed up or slow down your loco you've got direction change and then your functions so you turn on the lights and the cab lighting and, and vice versa you can also then add um, wagons or uh, carriages to any train um, and that's quite important for when you're doing block um, and automation it, you, the system needs to know how long the, the train in total is so it's quite important that you go through all this if you're like me you'll find the idea of basically building a database of all your stock um, and adding realistic kind of details is something that's very kind of <laughs> exciting and enjoyable there's going to be some people who think that that sounds horrendously boring so um, it's kind of horses for courses really um, the other thing you can do or have to do in this system to uh, run it automated is to create what the um, program calls a switchboard um, now the switchboard is uh, effectively a plan of your layout so using this uh, very basic tool you can quickly start to build up uh, a layout that may or may not represent should really represent what your uh, buildings but this one I'm just showing you how easy it is to create something but you can easily add uh, sections of track like this um, and, and alongside other sections or, or whatever so you can quite quickly um, put together a layout that represents what you're building and then at certain points you can basically start to build in blocks and you can actually then put the uh, trains on the tracks uh, and you can basically see in a completely digital world your trains moving around uh, which will obviously once the layout is built and connected up will actually represent what's happening on the uh, on the layout itself so it's basically a super um, complicated and uh, in-depth mimic panel it's almost to a level of like signal boxes and uh, and the way all that sort of stuff works so if you're interested in that side of things um, you'll certainly find this uh, very interesting indeed so I've actually taken the time to um, build out um, a switchboard of what the layout will currently be if the plans don't change um, you can see here that this area is the depot, um, the station area is just above it, and this big section down here is going to be the fiddle yard. Each of these uh, red markers um, represents block detection. Uh, so as you can see, once something is in the block, then uh, the block is basically marked as red and nothing else can enter that block. There are kind of various kind of uh, sections, but as you can see, all of this is kind of operational. It's all got names, and in theory, everything's been measured off of the plans. Um, so, it, you know, iTrain knows how long each of these sections of track is. This diagram is very much a working diagram and is not to scale. So the the scale comes in when you add the dimensions to the, um, the to the sections of track. You'll also be able to see on here that the points uh, actually work. So if you click on them will uh, switch over. Obviously if these were attached to accessories um, or accessory decoders on points you just simply press that button uh, and it would um, it would then change the points for you. The other thing that you can do is if you bring a locomotive into a section and then for example uh, wanted to send it down to here and you can click on route then automatically it will change all of the points along the way and basically um, reserve the route all the way along. So that's effectively where the automation comes from. The um, the locomotive would then um, move under its own steam, I suppose, and it would basically move along here and nothing else would be able to enter the route in which it's going along. Um, it would also be able to... Um, would have to still obey signals and everything so you can kind of have all that set and uh, yeah you can then have other movements going on you can drive manually uh, around this so kind of if your train that you're manually driving moves into a block then this one would have to wait there's there's so much kind of operational interest and and basically play like playability 
that comes from doing it this way, which is why I've decided to go down the uh, the automation route. Anyway, so my big challenge now is to get iTrain to actually control um, what is on the track. It's not something I've managed to do yet. Um, so I'm going to go away and, uh, and try and work out how to do that. So after many hours this afternoon of uh, trying to work the system, and uh, I should make it very clear that it's not so the system that's difficult to use, it's probably more my uh, lack of knowledge. Um, I have managed to finally get iTrain on a computer to run uh, trains on the track. So um, a massive thank you to um, James, or Jack at Tony Dock Station, and also to uh, James at DCC Train Automation, both of which have uh, helped me massively tonight. So uh, yeah, huge thank you. But anyway, the result of all these uh, questions and uh, trying to work things out, and I finally managed to do it. So um, this is the very first shot of any loco uh, being run by iTrain on my <laughs> layout, and also the first shot of a, a loco leaving the wonderful shed by Railway Laser Lines. So uh, here we go. And it's very easy. Um, you might be able to see on the screen here, uh, there's some icons at the bottom there for cab lights and lighting. Um, and to turn those on and off, it's just a case of hitting that button on the screen and it uh, switches things on and off. So very, very simple. You can basically line up as many functions as you want. If it's a sound loco, you can go to town and have all your sounds there. So it's just a case of clicking them on. Um, so this has been a, a massive kind of step forward um, for me, <laughs> certainly. If you're interested in uh, more about iTrain, then certainly check out uh, the DCC train automation website. I believe that James is talking about having a few sessions down at his shop where he's going to basically spend the day going through iTrain with uh, people who are interested in learning about it all. So I'm sure at some point he will put up the details around those training days and and everything that go, goes into it. So keep an eye out for that if it's something that interests you for sure. Um, but I think for me, that's where I'll leave it today. I will, once the, the layout is kind of uh, underway, I'm going to do a video far more in depth about the control um, and, and the block um, detection and everything like that. So there's certainly going to be more uh, of this sort of stuff if you are interested in it at a later date. But uh, I think for... The introduction, I probably should leave it there because that's pretty much all I know about the system at the moment. So thanks for joining me today on St Michael's Hill. Really appreciate you uh, sticking by. Um, there isn't going to be any running shots today as you've probably seen um, having just set up the controller on the on the test track. Um, there is you know, no real scope to get uh, things moving on the layout, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks that will be back and uh, you'll have more running shots from the uh, from the layout. So um, I'd just like to say thank you again for tuning in and uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, very soon. One other thing, there might well be a video between um, now and next Saturday. Um, I'm part of the Monorail Network Secret Santa, so um, at some point, probably in the next week or so, um, my gift will uh, arrive and I will be doing a kind of opening and uh, reveal of what that gift is. So that probably will come up um, somewhere midweek, either this week or the following week. So that's one other video to kind of keep an eye out for. Um, but anyway, from me, I'll leave it there and I will see you again very soon on St Michael's Hill. Thank you. Bye bye.